What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica, and we are down here. Peace, y'all. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. What's up, everybody? It's me, Erica, and we are down here for your Married to Medicine review. We start off with Anila and Dr. Karen. Um, Anila went to go stay with her mom for a couple of weeks after her house was broken into. There's so much shit surrounding that that, that break in. I, I, you know, I have to be honest with you. You know, I know that people express themselves in different ways. And we are often confused about the way that people express emotion because on television, we have been, you know, so conditioned to, to see an emotion and the full exaggeration of the emotion. So when an actual human being who isn't acting um, has a reaction to something and it doesn't fall in line with what we have seen on television, how people react to things, then we kind of question them. Anila, the way, even like the way that she, just the sound of her voice, the way that she's talking about it, it does not seem like she was really upset. It doesn't, I doesn't, it, it wasn't based on what she said that, that was gone, the way that she respond, like maybe we didn't see that, like, but what she was recording, the way she sounded, it didn't even sound like she was crying. It sounded like she was fake crying. I'm sorry. It did. And I was like, I, I, I don't know if anybody else noticed that, but it sounded like Anila wasn't even crying. But then I have to remember, like people don't cry for everything, right? People express emotions differently. And if you have been taught not to cry when something really bad happens to you, you don't even respond in the right way. I mean, it's not the right way. Oh God, it's not the right way, but there is no right way, but it's just, um, <laughs> it's just, it was just weird, right? So she stayed with her mom for a few weeks. She says she feels violated. They suspect that it's Toya. Kieran says that he had a relaxed sense of security and that was his fault. And so he is, you know, going to uh, put in cameras and he put in these, I don't know, were they baby monitor cameras? I was like, what kind of cameras are those? <laughs> and why did you put them up? <laughs> why you didn't call some a company to come in and put your cam your, your security system in? Is Dr. Kieran cheat? Because you try to do it and it's just running. Is it recording anything? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, Dr. Jackie's office, the woman that she interviewed, the doctor that she interviewed, she went ahead and hired her. We need more black OBGYNs. I'm thankful I had black OBGYNs. I sure did. I sure did. I'm so thankful. That's the one thing that I am thankful about living in Atlanta and having children in Atlanta is that my OBGYNs, it was a team, a team, two black women. Absolutely. And one delivered for my first son and the other delivered my second son. I was taken care of mm -hmm. and they paid attention to me. Like when I went in things, things that were happening any concern that I had, they did not ignore it. They were not dismissive. They did not tell me. They did not act like I didn't know what I was taught. They, none of that. I'm very thankful because the way that um, in the medical industry, the way that women, black women who are pregnant are treated is awful. And it's really sad because it comes from just a lot of racism and biases and this idea that black women can endure pain. And when you tell them you're in pain, they don't take it seriously. Um, they act like you want to be on drugs, like just a bunch of dumb, a bunch of dumb stuff. So I'm glad, you know, she, they, they're showing, um, I love it when they said OBGYNs don't make plates. Okay. I know that's right. So I love that. So the OBGYNs are needed. Um, she said, can we have some pink gloves? And uh, Dr. Jackie was like, if you wanted to come out your salary, she was like, oh, never mind. Let's just keep the blue. Dr. Jackie bought her a Gucci bag, a little crossbody Gucci bag. She was like, y'all be carrying these. And um, in the hospital, she was like, yes, girl. She said that she reminded her of her when she was younger. And she even referred to her as mini me. So 
you have um some big shoes to fill, ma'am, because Dr. Jackie is that girl, okay? She is that girl. She referred to that girl as a mini me, that woman as a mini a mini me. Eugene got a new job. He is oh look at the little doggies. He is an oncology, um, urgent care oncologist. So I'm not sure if he studied in oncology. I didn't know he studied oncology. But I guess it's, I mean, I don't know, in urgent care, I mean, I don't know. But he's going to just specifically focus on people with cancer. Well, it's going to allow him also the weekends with his family, and he only works a few days a week. Basically, he has like nine to five hours almost. Ashton Pooh, Ashy Pooh, is that what she called him? Eugene was like, do not call him that. Anyways, um, he wants to have a dinner party. He's turning 12. So cute. He wants to have a dinner party. I thought that was so cute. I was like, yes, dinner party. He wants to have a dinner party. His friends are going to come over. He wants to make steak with fries and beignets. So cute. It was so cute. So cute. Such a good, good idea. Eugene is a good cook. I keep telling y'all, Toya, you need to make a cookbook. You need to design different scenes because since you like to decorate and do all those things and you need to make a cookbook that says the meals my husband cooks for me. Y'all need to do that because he cooks for you and he he's a good cook. I'm sure he has a lot of different recipes and stuff like that. And then you could just be your pretty stay at home wife self and take pictures and have a, b a bunch of little you know scenes and shots set up and backdrop set up yes do it you could do it you should do it you should do that i thought about that and he was and then especially when he they went to jackie's house and he brought toya her plate we'll get into that because that's some dumb shit the plate conversation is so fucking dumb and dumb that it, it shouldn't even be a conversation and the fact that the women is sitting there enforcing you see how women women do fucking aunt, aunt, aunt lydia's they'll sit there and enforce them damn rules and then judge you like hm, hm, he's less of a man because he brought his wife a plate when you're the guy and you and you turn around you look dumb because you're girl let me shut up that's what heavenly be getting on my nerves with that dumb stuff she was looking like you see he brought he brought her a plate. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I, and I'm with Toya and Eugene. That's the least of our worries, honey. F somebody making a plate and I'm with Simone too. I'll give him whatever he want, but a plate I will not make, honey. Girl, get the fuck out of here with that dumb shit. You need to make a cookbook, Eugene. You and Toya. Meals my husband makes for me. Um, Cecil and Simone are sitting down with Amarosa and their book, um, proposal she says um she gives them feedback and tells them that they do not have the reason why they almost got a divorce because they haven't talked about it that's why <sighs> they almost got a divorce and we already know what the story is right with cecil's friend who was in people's business honey probably giving him advice <laughs> probably giving him advice he's probably complaining about his marriage and and she was giving him advice and he probably turned around and said well you know Rita said what the fuck you telling Rita my fucking business for I can hear Simone and I can hear Cecil saying that's what yeah that's what if you get advice from somebody don't be like and especially her girl I don't want to hear it she was in my marriage. They haven't talked about it. They haven't talked about it. They haven't figured it out. That look, they look so sad. Cecil looks so sad. They were like, we got to go back to therapy. We got to go back to therapy. We may not have a book out, but we got to go back to therapy. Or you could put your book out and do another book and say, or do like a little workbook and be like, why we almost got a divorce and how we worked through it and share your counseling journey share your counseling journey document your counseling journey so that you can have a book or workbook to come out after your book and say the reason why we got divorced and then we didn't work through it when we wrote our book we realized that we hadn't worked through that part of our relationship and so we had to go back to the drawing board and here is our journey through couples therapy 
to work out the reason why we got a divorce, or the reason why we were almost going to get a divorce. I think that would be good. I said, 30%. Toya, 30%. Cecil, Simone, 30%. Dr. Jackie's getting off work early, bitch. I screamed the way Dr. Jackie was walking. She was, <laughs> she was driving. <laughs> she was just looking like, it's daytime. <laughs> You should have been done that. If it was that serious, you should have been done that, honey. And she comes home. Curtis looks surprised. He was like, wait a minute, bitch. I got somebody upstairs. Hold up. He was making a sandwich and then he's tried to give her the sandwich. And she was like, wait, what's on it, honey? She is so picky. Um, I have a foundation. I got a surrogacy, a surrogacy agency. I have a podcast. A collaboration with Volition Beauty. What else did she say? Um, oh, the skin serum that has um, sunscreen in it. She has it at Neiman and Ulta.com. I said, come on, Neiman's and Ulta. She said she just wants to serve more people. I love it. I love Dr. Jackie. She's a little little snooty. A little snooty because she's messy, but she can't show her messy side because she has an image to uphold. Now, that is, I, I get it. 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 But... I think about Curtis. He tried to bring her out this golf bag and she was looking like, oh, that, oh yeah, this is what you bought me. (laughs) Girl, this is, girl, what? Mm -mm, Absolutely not. He was like, just forget it. And he took it back in the room. He's going to give it to his woman, honey. He'll give it to his woman. Don't worry about it. That damn golf bag will be gone. You will never see it again. He's going to give it to somebody else. Toya, she loves, she loves, she's having a party for her son, son's birthday party. He's doing a dinner party. She says she loves her things to look nice and extravagant. Um, and he has a special friend and I just put heterosexual agenda (laughs) cause I want to know if his special friend was a boy. If he had a crush on a boy, would they be like, Oh my God. Or would it be like, Oh my God, where did I go wrong? Oh, what did I do? My son is gay. I want to know. I want to know what you guys would have done if, if he had a little crush on a little boy, would you be all like, Oh my God. <laughs> is that what you would have done i want to know i really want to know i really want to know i do that's why i was like it's a heterosexual agenda they be talking about the gay agenda all the time but the way that they were so excited that this 12 year old person little boy is showing an interest in girls they were really happy they were really happy <laughs> you know they were in the damn confessional <laughs> I wonder if, if Ashton, like Dylan, would this be, would you be throwing this little party and giving roses out and stuff like that? I think roses should have been given, given to everybody, to the boys and the girls. I don't think roses, like I said, this is, somebody was like, well, most people are heterosexual or so they think. That's what I said. Like, like, why are you giving roses to the girls? Give roses to everybody or put roses on everybody's plate. That's what I thought she should have did is put a rose on everybody's plate. Don't just hand the girls roses and don't make him hand the girls roses. I don't know. I mean, I guess that's, if you, if that's what you're training them up to be, then that's okay. I mean, I guess that's what it is or whatever. Um, if, yeah, I said, if Ashton felt like this about a little boy, I wonder how they would feel. Um, they're at Heavenly's house. Heavenly is very calm and she's very talking in her voice. I said, well, she don't talk like that all the time. Her mom passed. Heavenly's mom passed. Heavenly t- said she wouldn't be who she what is today without her mother. Her mother spoke life into her. Her mother, um, the way she speaks life into her children and her husband, she said, um, she said, I'm doing all right. I'm okay. Um, she said that her and her sister, she needs to work on that relationship. Remember, um, heavenly saying that she, her sister reminded her of Mariah reminded her of her sister. Her sister was the quote unquote, pretty popular girl while heavenly was a little chubby, um, studious bookworm that had to be kept in the house. I guess it turns out the sustained amount to shit and, um, heavenly has. And so when things, when, when things are in trouble, they go to heavenly for help. Right. Um, they said her mother had boundaries. This is what Jackie said. Her mother had boundaries and you had to stay strong and you could not show vulnerability. That's where heavenly came from. 
Heavenly said she went to a prophetess who grabbed her hand and told her, um, you just lost somebody, didn't you? And she said, yes. And she says, um, did they have a problem with their, their legs? Cause they're telling me that they're dancing now. And she was like, oh my God. And then she said, her sister says that, um, what she said, her sister said, her sister said, what? Oh, the ice machine, the ice machine. I said, everybody's ice machine. <laughs> everybody's ice machine make noise and then she said well she sees the whim the um the curtains blowing they were like girl what is she talking about they were they were messing with her right she said the drapes been moving or whatever anyways so they so shout out to heavenly she lost her mom and i you know i i kind of noticed that when they all walked up to jackie's house um they had did um some type of drive where all the doctors, you know, I don't know why they didn't film it, but I guess it was cold or whatever. So they were outside. I guess they were getting Jackie's house together. I don't know. But she had them outside. Everybody was cold. And um, they had the, like a food truck outside. And uh, when they walked up to the food truck, Heavenly, uh, Simone, she walked up to the food truck. And I, I don't know if she walked in front of Heavenly. And Heavenly was like, oh, you're just going to walk in front of me? What did she say? She said something like that. And she's like, well, I need to eat. And she was like, I know I'm not getting my man a plate, girl. That was so funny because Heavenly is getting her daddy a plate. Here, daddy. So she's up there getting food for herself. And she's like, that's why you don't get sex every day because you feed yourself first. She was like, girl, whatever. Simone said, I do what's required of me, honey, but I'm not making a play. I said, I know that's right. Toya sees Curtis. All I could think about was that time Toya walked past Curtis and sat on his lap. Y'all remember that? girl do y'all remember that i said oh my god no she did because you know toy let me tell you something i don't know if you know this they don't really get too many shots of of toya's rear end it's a caboose back there oh yes and when she sat on that man's lap everybody was like what remember that and he hugged her she goes over there she asked eugene to get her a plate she was like, he was like, yeah, I'll get you a plate. Cause all the men go over to the food truck and they were like, um, you know, OBGYNs, they don't make plates. So Curtis over there getting his own plate, uh, Cecil over there getting his own plate and Dr. Scott is over there getting his own plate. Um, Eugene brings Toya her plate. Um, she said, that's the least of our worries. Um, they FaceTime Anila, right? Yeah, the least of the, the plate thing, girl, we're not even, that's some servant made shit. That's not like, a, a, get my plate, you get your plate. If that's how we do, I'm a courtesy, I'm going to bring your plate. Like, it's not that big a deal, right? I'll bring you your plate. Do you want something? I'm going here. But there is no duties assigned to somebody bringing somebody a plate. It's just whoever can do whatever. If you could get a plate for me, give me a plate. If you can't, don't. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get in line, go over there and get you something to eat before they run out of food. Um, that's where I'm going. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. They call Anila on FaceTime. Um, they get off of FaceTime. Jackie says it's traumatizing. The women start asking her questions when they were on the FaceTime. She says she definitely feels targeted. Quad goes ding, 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 ding. I'm telling you, Quad and Anila are in cahoots. Y'all can't tell me nothing. Y'all can't tell me nothing. Quad and Anila are in cahoots. I love how they were like dismissive to um, Anila by saying she doesn't have enough followers for people to notice her y'all some haters y'all some fucking haters you know how i know they haters because they keep saying that she wasn't able to get five hundred thousand dollars worth of um of furniture for free just by simply posting because she doesn't have enough followers that doesn't matter y'all with this quantity thing it does not matter if she has enough people who will go and click on that link and buy something from those people, it don't, it don't even have to take 70 people. She has reach. That, however many people, it does not matter. How many people go to her page? How many, how many people are interested in the post that she's posting? That's what matters. Engagement. Yeah, you can have 4 million followers, but you can guarantee there's people with under 
10,000 followers who are making money on Instagram. So don't knock that shit. I don't like that they're doing that. I really don't like that they're doing that. Now I do, you know, it's kind of annoying how she makes it seem like that's, you know, oh my God, it's all I do because I do feel like Anila takes every opportunity. I don't, I, I don't follow Anila, but I just have a feeling she's the type of person that takes every opportunity that comes to her. Don't nobody know. You only have 70 followers. Contessa, I don't know what it is with Contessa and Anila, but she is being very dismissive to what Anila is going through. If she may not believe her, it's something that's going on because she said something. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. What does she say? Hold on. Let me go. Okay. Nobody knew Toya had a party. So they go inside. Anila's devastated. Carrie said there was a hit. Then Contessa gets on her phone and looks up the Urban Dictionary um, definition for a hit to, to, to disqualify her. Whether, whatever you want to describe it. She was targeted. There was a hit put out on her. That She was surveyed. Whatever. Contessa. Like, I was like, why is Contessa? She was like, let's define a hit. A hit is something. Is she in the mafia? She is delusional. I was like, girl, what? Why is she acting like that? She must not believe her. She must not believe Anila. I'm telling you, the way Anila was crying, I was like, girl, did somebody steal from you for real? Because it doesn't sound like it. Oh my God, I can't be in this room. This is just so, it's just like, it's so, I just don't know, you know. But again, you can't judge people on the way they emote because it doesn't look the way that you've seen it. Someone else do it. You know what I mean? Is it possible that she's a liar? She's going around lying. She's going around lying. She's saying that I was cheating on Eugene. She said, she said I was cheating. She was like, I didn't say nothing about your family. Did nobody say nothing about your family? And she was like, that's not what Heavenly said. Heavenly said, listen, um, (laughs) Heavenly said, um, don't put me in shit. It's not intelligent. This is, this a lot of rumors going on. It's a lot of rumors going on. It's a lot of rumors I know about you. She said, girl, I don't play with me. I, I'm I'm fucking, I'm only fucking my man. I was like, oh, come on, bitch. I ain't fucking nobody but my man. Heavenly told them to, y'all can kiss my ass. Fuck y'all, kiss my ass and climb a tree. She tried to make her grand exit and the fucking door wouldn't open. I said, oh, don't you hate that? I hate that. I hate that when you like leave a room and you slam the door, but you forgot something outside, somebody, some, <laughs> something on the other side of the door and you, got <laughs> you slam the door and you're like, damn, I left my water out. <laughs> you gotta wait. You gotta wait. You can't go back. You gotta wait. You gotta wait for like five minutes and then come back out. Cause you can't slam a door. You can't make a grand exit. And then get stuck. That's so funny to me. She says, time to go. (laughs) She said, it's time to go. She walks downstairs and they were like, what's going on? He was like, okay, here we go. This is Damon. All right, here here we go. So they leaving or whatever. And then Heavenly says, I don't have nothing to do with that's Toy over there talking shit. Because I I don't have to talk shit. Because my my man's dick is big, okay? (laughs) I said, oh, look at Heavenly throwing dicks. <laughs> Damon said, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> Heavenly's letting Eugene know that we talking about you. We talking about you because your wife said you your thing ain't big, honey. Let me tell you something. Eugene got it going on. Eugene got it going on. He's, he's, uh, he's just a well, seems like to be well-rounded. I don't, we haven't even seen, I haven't even got a glimpse, a glimpse of like that toxic, like none of that stuff from Eugene. None of it, none of it, none, none of it. Y'all need to leave Eugene alone. He's just regular, just a regular dude, regular dude who can cook, doesn't have that with those weird ideas about gender roles or anything like that. We don't know because we got to see because it, it, it the test is in the children. We, we'll, we'll see. 
anyway, so she said, let's go. Um, T Toya said she can't be compassionate to the, to that bitch, but this is what I thought. Like, okay. So I was confused because she said, um, I thought that, oh shit. Oh, hello. Hello. I thought that heavenly was trying to help Toya. I really did. Y'all go back and watch my review. I said that Heavenly gay. I said that was really nice of Heavenly because she don't fuck with Toya. And that was really nice of her to give her a heads up. But they looked at it as she's trying to get some shit started. I was like, what? What? <laughs> maybe, maybe that was it. We just are not in on the joke. Okay. They getting ready to go outside. Simone tells Toya to your Heavenly's left, right? She tells her, don't worry about it. No, no. She tells her, um, when we go outside, don't say nothing to her. Like, basically, be the bigger person. She's trying to tell her to be the big, bigger person. She was like, um, Simone is a loyal friend. And that she doesn't, not Simone, Toya is a loyal friend. And she doesn't get it back. I was like, what is that? What? Simone, what are y'all be talking about? I am like, are, are we being left out of stuff? Because I don't know what we're talking about. No one is perfect. Um, Toya says they come after her because she's a strong chick. But you hella brolic in the way that you relate to the women around you. You real buff. Yeah. So you come off strong. So when it comes back to you, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. Dude, when um, Heavenly, where is that? When Heavenly said, where is it? Heavenly said, wait, I think I tweeted it last night. When I tell you that shit had me screaming, wait, wait, let me go back to my Heavenly said, this is how I felt. I felt her when she said this. Hold on. Heavenly said, um, <laughs> said Quad was running after Heavenly and Damon, right? She was like, girl, don't worry about it. She said, I ain't worried about it. I just been going through a lot. My mom, <laughs> Girl, she said, <laughs> it was just a list, girl. She said, I ain't worried about it. I just been going through a lot. My mom just died. I hate dumb bitches, bitch. When she said, I hate dumb bitches, I said, oh my God, look, I'm going through so much stuff and you come to me with some dumb shit. Like, girl, shut your dumb ass up. I know that's what heavenly, but to Toya's point, she was like, that's why I don't fuck with heavenly. I don't have to feel sorry that her mama died. Girl, I don't give a fuck. But heavenly, they didn't, that's what I said. What I noticed when they first got to Jackie's house, no one said, I'm sorry to hear about your mom. They didn't show that. And I thought that was messed up. I really did think that was messed up. No matter what, Contessa came back there and gave Heavenly a hug and was like, I don't know. I didn't want, don't hug me. I didn't like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I want to like Contessa because I think she is beautiful, but it's just something about her. I just can't get with like, she came back there and she was like, you know, um, I know we didn't say nothing to you. I'm sorry. And this and that. And she gave Heavenly a hug. Heavenly's like, no, I'm all right. Like, I'm like, don't hug me. Like, ugh, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. That was, was that the end of the episode? I think that was the end of the episode. Hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Heavenly said, I'm going through a lot. My mom just died. I hate dumb bitches. Like, that's it. Like, girl, leave me alone with your dumb stuff. Leave me alone with, the, with your dumb stuff. Let me see. That was it. Yeah, Heavenly was throwing dick. She said her man's dick was big, honey. Tell her nothing. Anyways, y'all, that was the end of the episode. Take care of each other. Protect your energy. Let's get down in the comments. Peace.